Hi there, we're going to continue working on our first person controller. If you missed the first part of this video, there is a link in description. And in the first part, we got our character to look around by using the mouse movements. And in this video, we're going to get our character to move around and jump. So let's get started. So one thing that you might have noticed, I have a dot right here in the middle and I just dropped an image and used a knob source image for that. That way I can see where the center is pointing. Now the way that I'm going to set up movement is by using a rigid body. You could use a character controller, but if you use a character controller, you also have to calculate your own gravity. So I'm just going to use a rigid body. That way the gravity is calculated by the rigid body. So let's go to our player at component and we want to add the rigid body. One thing that I want to change in the rigid body is add a constraint and I want to freeze a rotation so that my character won't fall down. And the other component that I need is a collider and I'll use a capsule collider. Let's go to our scene and see the collider shape and you can see that it's a sphere. I need to decrease the radius to 0.25. There you go. That fits our character now and that is it that's all the configuration that we need to do for our player so this video is going to have the same flow as the first part i'll start by explaining everything and showing how to set it up using visual scripting bolt but then i'll recreate the same logic using c sharp i do provide more details when i'm setting up in bolt so if you want to hear more explanation behind the process watch through the explanation that i do with bolt but you can always skip to the end and see how i set it up in C sharp. Let's click edit graph. I'll go to full screen. So this is where we left off in the previous part. So I have the rotation left to right and also rotation up and down. And now I want to add movement. For movement I'm going to use input axis. So get axis and the axis names are horizontal and vertical. So if you want to see which buttons control the horizontal axis you can go to project settings and look at horizontal and right here we can see that we have a left and right button so we can use the arrow keys and also use a and d similar for vertical we can see that we have down up and s and w so that's the default settings that unity has for horizontal and vertical now the output that we get from the horizontal and vertical are ranging from negative one to one so if we take a look at X and Y coordinates and X will be our horizontal, Y will be our vertical. So if we're going to the left, then we'll have negative one for X. If we go to the right, it's going to be one and same thing for vertical. So if we go up, it's going to be one. And if we're going down, it's going to be negative one. So that's the values that we'll be getting from our input. And we're going to take those values and create a vector three. So new vector three and our horizontal will be connected to X but our vertical is going to be connected to Z since in unity Y is actually going up and our vertical should control the forward movement. Now, if we go and plot what possible vectors we get, you'll see that our max values will plot out a square. And there is a problem with this. The problem is in the movement speed. So if we're going to be moving forward, our movement speed is going to be the magnitude of our vector. So it's going to be one. But if we move diagonally, our magnitude, the length of this line is actually square root of two. So if we leave it as is, the player will move faster when he's moving diagonally. And that's not what I want. I want the magnitude to be the same in any direction that you go. And when magnitude is same in every direction, how our maximum values are going to look like is in form of a circle. So that's what I want for maximum values. The way that we can achieve that is by normalizing our vector. So if we look for normalize vector three, what that will do, it'll take our vector three and it will make sure that whenever the magnitude exceeds one, it will scale it down. So it will not go outside of this circle. That's a quick explanation what normalize does and why I'm using it here. But now, like I said, the maximum magnitude that we're going to get from a normalized vector is one. So that is the speed of our player movement. And if you want to increase the speed, we can multiply this normalized vector by a float. So if I want the maximum speed to be three, I can set the float to three and that will increase my maximum speed to three. Now there's actually more calculations that we need to do. But for now, let's set this velocity to our rigid body. So under rigid body, we have velocity 
I'm going to use set and we'll pass in that vector three as the direction that we want our character to move. And let's connect it to our update event. Connect it here. We can exit the full screen and I'll move my player a little bit higher and I'll position it uh, right here. You can click play and see what's going to happen now. There's two issues that we're going to notice. You can see that the character is falling down, but he's going really slow. The gravity is higher than that. And when we try moving our character, when we click W, you can see that no matter what direction I'm looking at, he's still going to go straight. And that's not what I'm looking for. When I press W, I want the character to move in the direction that I'm looking at. So let's go fix those two issues. So to move our character in the direction that we're facing, I need to use my character Y rotation in my calculation for velocity vector. And that is pretty easy to do. So what we can do is get transform dot rotation and we can multiply this rotation by the vector three. And there's a little bit of magic going on. What actually happens in the back, the quaternion gets converted to a rotation matrix and then it gets multiplied by the vector three. But that's all done for us, so we don't have to do any of that. And if I connect this vector for velocity, I can click play and preview that now. So now I can move in the direction that my player is viewing. But you can see that I'm still kind of floating in the air slowly. So let's go fix that issue as well. So the reason why that float happens is because as you can see in our new vector that we're creating, we have Y set at zero. And that means that the velocity that we're sending for our rigid body always has Y set at zero. And basically what that does, it resets the velocity that the gravity is building up on our rigid body. So what we actually wanna do is keep the Y velocity off our rigid body and just change the X and Z. And how we're gonna do that is we're first gonna cache the value that we get from this multiply. And what cache unit does, it creates a temporary variable. That's what you can use to store the value so you wouldn't recalculate it. And in our case, if we won't use this cache value, it's not gonna actually work. And I'll explain why. So I want to connect it to a cache like that. So I have the velocity vector in here now and I want to change the Y value of it. So let's do a vector three dot Y set. I'll pass in the vector three and you can see that this unit does not have a vector three as an output because it modifies the cached variable. And that is why I'm using the cache unit. Now let's connect the Y value and I'm gonna get it from the rigid body dot velocity get and I'm looking for the Y value. Connect that in. And after we set the Y value, we can set the velocity to our rigid body. And we're gonna be getting the vector three from our cached value. There we go, that's the setup. Let's go and see how that works. Just soon as the game starts, you can see that the character falls down real fast, just like we expect him to. So that's all we needed to do for movement. And now let's get our character to jump. So for jumping, I'm gonna use a space. Whenever you hit space on the keyboard, the character is gonna jump. How I'm gonna make the jump is by setting the velocity in the Y direction to my desired jump speed. And in our movement setup, we're already setting up Y here. So now based on my input, I want to switch which Y to use, either the Y that is currently in the rigid body or the speed for my jump. So let's add an input, get key down. The key that I'm looking for is space. I'm gonna use the Boolean output for a select unit. If the value is false, I'll pass in the Y velocity from our rigid body and we'll connect it here. But if I get a true value, then what I wanna do is actually pass in the float and the float is gonna be the speed of my jump. So set it to five and that is it. That's all I need to do for the jump. So now we can play and whenever it hits space, you can see that I'm jumping but I can click the space multiple times and the player's still gonna be jumping. So to fix that, we'll need to have a ground check and make sure that the player is on the ground, but I'm not gonna be doing that in this video. So let's add a group for this, call it jump. So that is it, that's the setup that we're gonna use for the movement. Now let's go and recreate this with C Sharp. Go to inspector, turn off our flow machine and turn on our FB controller. Let's open the FB controller file. So we have rotate right left logic, then rotate up down. And now we're gonna add movement. 
So first we're gonna create the cached variable and in C sharp, it's equivalent to just having a variable inside of the method. So the variable that we want to create is a vector three. We'll call it velocity. And now we can calculate the value for it. So like I said in the previous video, how I go about converting a Bolt Visual Script into C sharp is by going in reverse. So the first thing that we do is multiply a rotation by a vector three. So let's get our transform dot rotation and it's a quaternion then we multiply it by our calculation of the vector we are creating a new vector then normalizing it and then we multiply it by three so in c sharp we do new vector then for x we pass in input dot axis dot horizontal for y we pass in zero and for z we pass in input dot get axis vertical after that we can call normalized on our vector three and that will normalize our vector and multiply by three which is the speed of our movement finish it off with a semicolon and that's our cached value next step after we cache the value we want to set our velocity y to the value that we got from the rigid body and in our c-sharp script we need to create a reference to our rigid body so let's go to the top right here so in both whenever you use the rigid body unit it finds the rigid body that is connected to the object that you pass in and then you can use it like that in c-sharp i'm gonna go ahead and create a variable so let's create a rigid body variable in our class and we'll name it player rigid body then in start method, I want to find the rigid body of our player and set it to player rigid body. So we can say player equals get component. Then we pass in the type of a component that we're looking for, which is a rigid body. Then we write the parentheses and end it off with a semicolon. So this way we have the player rigid body variable available anywhere we want to use. Now we can go back to writing our movement script. And now what we want to do is get our velocity dot y and set it to the player rigid body velocity y. And this way we keep our y value of our velocity. So we're done with calculating for our velocity. Let's set it back to our rigid body. So player dot velocity equals to velocity. We can save it now and let's test it out. So you can see that the gravity is working and we can move around in the direction that we are facing. Now let's add the jump ability. So for the jump, the approach that we took was to modify which Y value we use for the velocity. So let's go inside here and add an if statement and we can get that input dot get key down and then we can use the key code the key that we're looking for is space pass that in i'm going to write out the curly brackets so it'd be easier to see if the value is true then what we want to do is set velocity y to five else if that's not true then we want to set the velocity y to our player rigid body velocity y so that's one way of writing it in C-sharp. And as you can see, it takes up eight lines, but there's another way you can do it in just one line. And what we can do, so let's remove this else statement. When we're setting velocity.y equals, we can do a condition check. So we can check for our input get space, followed by a question mark. And the first value that we can pass in is the value if the statement is true. So in our case, if the statement is true, we want to pass in five followed by a colon. And after the colon, we can pass in the value that we wanna use if the statement is false. So this way we save a couple lines of code and it doesn't look so bulky. So there you go. That's our jump implementation. We can save this now and let's test it out. Now, as you noticed, I did use a velocity for movement and it's just a choice that I made. You can also create movement using force, but it's just gonna be a little bit different and there you go, now our jump works. We can move around side to side, front, back, jump. We're not doing a ground check, so that's still something we need to do. And you can still pick up these carrots. If you point the center at the carrot that you want to pick up, that's the position of our cursor, and you can still pick up those items. And that's the functionality that I did when we were creating the inventory. That is it for this part, so I'll make one more part, and in the next part I'm going to demonstrate how to do a ground check.
If you found this video useful, click on the like button. Also consider subscribing if you're not. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.